Hello and welcome to Napoleon High School for this year's Western Buckeye League Swimming Championships. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham. And Cody, we're two weeks out from tournament play, or tournament swim, excuse me, but the conference matchups, these, these rivalries, these kids know each other so well, they swim with one another so often. Today is a big day for all these swimmers. Oh, this is a big day. It's a big signal of the end of the regular season. They're getting ready uh, for this postseason tournament. And this is literally for school pride, for conference pride. So we are underway with the girls' 200-yard medley relay, Heat 2. Our swimmers look like this in lane one, Izzy Lida, lane two, Walpock, lane three, Shawnee, lane four, Ottawa, Glandor, lane five, St. Mary's, and lane six, Kenton. First leg of the IM relay underway, and it is the backstroke. We have some strong backstroke swimmers in this league. It's, you know, the Western Buckeye League is known for their swimming prowess. We know what the tradition that uh, Shawnee and some of the swimmers that they have had um, come through, but all of these teams are used to seeing success. Oh yeah, and they're actually, they're really familiar with each other. Uh, most of these kids swim year round, either with each other or against each other. Uh, so there's a little bit of a personal competition just as much as it is a school competition today. Second leg is in the water. Currently out to a short lead is the team from Ottawa Glandorf, Marissa Beckett swimming the breaststroke for them. Nice turn as she comes in, she has opened her lead. Shawnee and Walpock fighting for second place as they hit the flags heading into the wall. First in the waters, Ottawa Glandorf, Morgan Mag, followed closely by Shawnee, Walpock, and we have St. Mary's in fourth place. Shawnee has closed the gap in the fly. And as you see, it's Addison Newman with a great fly coming out of the water in the lead. She has made up all that time and then some. That open turn and that underwater was a huge difference in that 50 fly right there. Kayla Frost from Shawnee first in the water. It's going to be her job to hold this lead as her teammate Newman had given her a wide one. But here comes Ottawa Glandorf. Olivia Fenberg trying to make it up. Flip turn out of the wall first to Shawnee. Fenberg close second trying to reel her in. Staying close to the lane lines, not wanting to get caught in the backwash from Shawnee. And they are going to come down to it. Fenbert has come up, looks like she's gonna try to reach and just gets out touched as the 200 IM conference champions are gonna be the Shawnee Indians. And we are off to a tremendous start as that relay was fast and fierce. And you can see just at the last second touching the wall was Kayla Frost. Olivia Fenbert did an excellent job. We will step aside and when we return, we will have the boys 200 yard medley relay. You're watching High School Swimming on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsors Wallbass Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Welcome back to Napoleon High School. Heat one of the boys 200 yard medley relay just finishing up as Heat two is getting ready to step on the block. We'll take a look at the lineup for Heat two. In lane one will be Salina. Lane two, Shawnee. Lane three, Walpaw Canetta. Lane four, St. Mary's. Num lane five, Ottawa Glandorf. And lane six, Van Wert. Top time coming into this race is held by Wapaw Canetta, 139.5 qualifying time. So we see the, uh, right now, at least on paper, Wapaw Canetta has quite a bit of a lead here that these teams are gonna have to try to rail in. Oh yeah, I expect to see some real aggression on these blocks from these boys in the lanes next to them. Owen Becker starts off the backstroke for Wapaw Canetta for Shawnee, Mason Latham, Brock Wally for Salina, Reese Triplett for St. Mary's, Dylan Geiswines for Ottawa Glandorf and Sam Hogue for Van Wert. First 25 is finished. Coming out of that turn, you see lane four, St. Mary's Reese Triplett with the short lead. But Owen Becker looks like he took it back there in that last 10 meters. Oh yeah, this leg right here is gonna be incredibly fast. We have a bunch of really experienced, strong breaststrokers. Lane one has Jackson Newman from Salina, who's a YMCA Nationals qualifier. Lane two is Connor Latham, who is a senior for Shawnee and has just continued to develop and has excelled greatly. Ross Honigford here in Walpock is really kind of really pushing in this lead, and he is getting pushed real strong by Marcus McLean. Walpock and St. Mary's battle out for the first place. Walpock in the water first for the fly, but St. Mary's right behind. As you see Griffin Lubke trying to reel in and see if he can't get his team into the lead heading into the free. They touch the wall just about the same time. 
All right, that's an impressive catch up on that first 25, and they're going to dig deep heading into those last 10 yards. Walpock and St. Mary's neck and neck as they hit the flag. St. Mary's looks like they may have just gotten a little bit of a lead, but you couldn't tell as both St. Mary's and Walpock hit the water at the same time. Walpock out to the quick lead here in the free as you see Luke Weirwill and Brady Triplett from St. Mary's battle it out. And here comes Weirwill. He's opening up that lead and it looks like Luke is going to take home the victory for the Redskins as he is going to touch in a time of 141-24. Another close finish as the 200-yard medley relay is always an exciting race. And we got WBL championship started off the right way. Two very close races right down to the wire. And congratulations to the Walpock boys for their conference win. We're going to step aside, and when we return, it will be the girls' 200-yard freestyle on the blocks. As Heat 4 of the girls' 200-yard freestyle race is wrapping up, Heat 5 of 5 is getting ready to step up to the blocks. That heat will be made up of in lane number 1, Lauren Trombley. Lane number 2, Delaney Buxton. Lane number three, Morgan Schimler. Lane number four, Haley Childs. Number, lane number five, Willow Horman. And lane number six, Erica Bell. Morgan Schimler from Shawnee has the top qualifying time of 209.53. But right behind her, just a half a second is going to be Haley Childs in lane four from Van Wert. And they are off. And this should be a this should be a good race. You know, the 200 is an interesting race, Cody, because you know, it's kind of in that middle of a sprint and, and distance. So you have to have a good strategy and pace yourself smartly throughout this race. Uh, absolutely. And you'll actually see a couple of these play out a little bit differently. You'll see, uh, depending upon the stroke and the type of swimmer, you'll see how they treat it more like a sprint in terms of the intensity at which they're uh, turning over their arms. You see some other ones who just want to get in that rhythm right away. They want their splits to be pretty even. Uh, they don't typically borrow energy from like the middle or the, the second half portion. They kind of get into it. What really separates those who are incredibly strong from those that are pretty good is how they really kind of treat that middle 100. Uh, are they going to treat that middle 100 as their sprint, as their 100 sprint for this race, knowing that they're going to get that adrenaline coming into that last, fist, that last 50. So it'll be interesting to see how these uh, two fast swimmers in uh, lanes four and five treat this last 50. And no surprise, this one is close as we get through the first 100, and they are separated by only a tenth of a second as currently Morgan Schimler is in the lead with Haley Childs right behind her. Yeah. Take a look at the girls' 200 medley relay finals as we saw Shawnee come away with the victory. Second place went to Ottawa Glandor, third place Walpock, fourth place St. Mary's, fifth place Elida, and sixth place, a little bit of a surprise in the first heat, Salina did a nice job and they got themselves onto the podium. Yeah, Salina dropped a ton of time uh, in that first heat, just kind of uh, swimming out there with that and, and picked off another team in that fast heat. And we are coming down to the last 50. As you can see, lane four and five right now, neck and neck, Schimler and Child, um, excuse me, three and four, Schimler and Childs going back and forth as Morgan comes through the turn first in the last 25. Absolutely, Morgan and uh, and Haley over there had a pretty good battle in that uh, about that 100 150 mark, and now Morgan is just absolutely pulling away in this last 50. As you see, Morgan Schimler is going to come away with the victory. Haley Childs was right behind her, but congratulations to Morgan Schim Schimler as she is the 2023 WBL champion in the girls' 200-yard freestyle. So the girls are going to get out of the pool, and the boys are going to step up next. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. As the boys 200-yard freestyle, the heat two of three is just finishing up, and the final heat is getting ready to get onto the blocks. They will be in lane one, Mason Latham. Lane two, Daniel Coe. Lane three, Alex Huntingford. Lane four, Sam Hogue. Lane five, Colin Steffen. And lane six, Lucas Bell, the favorite. In lane three, Alex Huntingford and Cody, we might be on uh, meet record watch. We are absolutely on that watch right now. He's technically seated about three seconds ahead of that uh, previous meet record time. So the swimmers are off and into the water, and we were talking about the strategy for the girls. Uh, same kind of strategy here um, for the boys as well. Your pacing is going to be important. Where How you get out and how you settle in is really going to matter, especially um, if you're trying to chase down somebody with such a large lead as Alex Huntingford. 
Well, and this is where the difficult part is when you're a swimmer on either side of the lane or something like that who has that seat time like that is you still have to be able to swim your own race. You don't want them to get too far ahead of you, but you don't really want to kind of go in way too hot and then have to borrow that energy that you need in that middle 100 when they're going to pick up steam and be really strong. Well, and you kind of saw Sam Hogue do that exact thing as he got out to the early lead. But very quickly, Alex Huntingford erased that, and they are neck and neck here as they come through on the first 100. Let's take a look at the final results for the boys' 200 medley relay. Uh, your WBL champions were Wapaw Kaneda. Second place went to St. Mary's. Third, Shawnee. Fourth, Van Wert. Fifth, Salina. And in sixth place on the podium was Ottawa Glandorf. So you can see Alex Huntingford continuing to open up his lead here as Sam Hogue is fading just a little bit as they come through with just 50 yards left to go in the race. This is where as a swimmer, you are definitely feeling the heat in your muscles, you're starting to feel that fatigue. This is where technique uh, definitely makes tired a little bit easier and you're gonna see him come in and finish incredibly fast. So Huntingford now on his last 25, already about halfway down the pool, has opened up that lane one more time, a minute 40. Trying to beat the meet record of 147.43. And unofficially, Alex Huntingford does it as he touches the wall in 145.54. And that will be a new WBL meet record. In second place, Sam Hogue as the rest finish. And what a strong finish for Alex Huntingford. You can see nice long strokes getting into the water, getting a good pull, and finishing strong to set the new record. So congratulations to Alex. We will step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Napoleon High School as the girls 200 yard individual medley is underway. Heat two of three is just finishing up and we are getting ready for heat three of three. Lane assignments for heat three. Lane one, Kaya Howe. Lane two, Elizabeth Seidner. Lane three, Marissa Beckett. Lane four, Sierra Rupert. Lane five, Morgan Mag. And in lane six, Ariam Eo. As you take a look at the qualifying times, this looks like it is shaping up to be one heck of a race, Cody, as the top two times both come in at 217, only separated by six tenths of a second. And, you know, we were talking off air. You mentioned you wouldn't be surprised to see a couple other ones drop some time, too. Yeah, Elizabeth Seidner up here in lane two is, you know, just a few seconds behind is definitely within striking distance for a championship meet. Swimmers are on the block, and we are underway. In the individual, um, it takes a little bit of a different type of swimmer here because a lot of swimmers are used to being able to focus just on one stroke and kind of specialize. But when you swim as I am, you have to make yourself proficient in all four. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can definitely tell the swimmers that are maybe a little bit more proficient in one stroke or another. Um, really, the big separation typically happens, especially in a high school meet, is in that 50 breaststroke, that, that third leg um, of this really four-leg event. Uh, so as they really kind of get through this butterfly into the backstroke, you know, they can go out pretty hot and butterfly because now in backstroke, they're on their back. They can breathe the whole time, get through this, so they can really push it a little bit more from an intensity standpoint than they can sometimes in some other events. As you see, Marissa Beckett has opened herself up a pretty good lead here on this backstroke. Sierra Rupert found herself in third after the fly, but it looks like she has closed now in second. As you see, Elizabeth Seidner now go to third, but trying to keep pace with those top two. But Marissa Beckett having one heck of a race here so far. But as you mentioned, getting ready for this third leg, we're gonna see what these swimmers are made of as they get onto this breaststroke. Yeah, this is gonna be a huge difference, especially we can tell really when we get in this pole out, you can tell the intensity that the, how this breaststroke is gonna be swum. They're trying to get through this with as much power as possible and then really set themselves up for a good 53 to finish out this race. So while we have a second, we'll take a look at the final results for the girls 200 yard freestyle. Your WBL champion comes from Shawnee, Morgan Schimler in second place, Haley Childs from Van Wert. Third place, Delaney Buxton from Kenton. Uh, fourth place, Willow Horman of Ottawa Glendorf. Fifth place, Erica Bell of Shawnee. And in sixth place, Lauren Trombley from Ottawa Glendorf. So the final 50 of the individual medley relay as Marissa Beckett just continues to dominate. She has dominated from the start and has opened up about a uh, two-length lead here and it might be a little bit too much for anybody to overcome. 
Yeah, this is a bit much for this point. We're going to see a really close race for a second here between uh, Elizabeth Seidner and Sierra Rupert. As Marissa Beckett, it looks like she's in line for a significant time drop as she comes into the wall at 2.15, drops two seconds, and we have a race for second. We'll see who can touch the wall first, and it looks like it is going to be Sierra Rupert from St. Mary's with Elizabeth Seidner in third place. It is time for the sprint races. We're going to step aside, and when we come back, we will have the Oh, excuse me. First, we're going to have the boys 2 100 individual relay. Got too excited to see that everybody get off too fast. <laughs> Don't want to miss out on the boys I am. When we return, we'll have them in the water. We'll be back on WOSN. As the boys 200-yard IM is underway. Heat 2 of 3 is just finishing up. Saw a nice race between the brothers from Shawnee and Aiden and Connor Latham. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham as we are in line here and getting ready for Heat 3 of 3. Lane assignments for the third heat. In lane one, Thomas Cove, Shawnee. Lane two, Logan Hartman from Defiance. Lane three, Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. Lane four, Jaden Welker of Van Wert. Lane five, Brady Triplett of St. Mary's. And in lane six, Aiden Schneider of Wapak. In heat one, we actually saw Ross Huntingford, and he had yet to have a time in this race. Um, hadn't swam it yet this year. It was his first time in the pool. We saw what he could do in the 200-yard freestyle a little bit ago. So it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of crash the party on this um, final heat and sneak into the top six. Yeah, he's absolutely within striking distance and could uh, ruin the party here a little bit. The swimmers are on the block waiting for the official, and there they go into the water. Top time coming into this race is held by Lane Three's Reese Triplett from St. Mary's, 203-82. He holds a two-second lead on the second uh, fastest time. That's from Jaden Welker of Van Wert. You see out into the butterfly is a little bit of a different lineup for the IM than we saw in the medley relay. Butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and then free as they now get into the backstroke and try to settle in a little bit. Yeah, Jaden is an incredibly strong butterfly, and you got to see a uh, pretty big difference here in that first 50, but this is where you're really going to see probably Reese um, really have a pretty good swim, and he's probably going to close a little bit of time coming into the breaststroke. Jaden Welker had a great butterfly, ended up with a two-second lead coming into the backstroke that he is trying to hold on to. You see Reese Triplett trying to track him down. A little bit of trouble it looked like on the turn by Jaden Welker. It cost him a little bit of time heading into this breaststroke. Those transitions from one stroke to the next, sometimes the big difference, especially when you're trying to be real aggressive and real smooth in a championship meet like this. Uh, sometimes you can overstep it just a little bit, uh, go through this, but I'm going to tell you right now, the intensity that uh, both of these boys are swimming here in lane three or four is uh, pretty impressive. Reese Triplett has definitely made up some time as he is within about a half a body length of Jaden as they go into the final turn looking for the freestyle. Jaden Welker trying to hold on to his lead. Reese Triplett trying to track him down as Triplett is almost pulled just about even as they go into the final flip turn. Welker into the wall first. And they came out of the water right about the same time. This is going to be neck and neck, going to come down to the final. We'll see who can push from the flag to the wall. Triplett, Welker, Triplett, Welker. Oh. And it is going to go to lane three. Reese Triplett comes from behind and takes a three-tenths of a second victory over Jaden Welker. That was incredibly impressive. You got to see... You know, Jaden really have uh, somebody to push him at that time. He dropped an absolute ton of time and really put a lot of pressure on Reese to finish that race out. So I might have been a little early before, but now it's going to be time for the sprints. My favorite, mainly because my swim coach didn't want me in the water any longer than 50 yards anyway. So I'm excited to watch our sprinters. When we return, we'll have them. The girls are up first, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back, girls. 50-yard freestyle race is underway as Heat 5 just finishing up. As Heat 6 will be on deck. Lane assignments for Heat 6 in Lane 1. Eliana McCrate. Lane 2, Haley Beckett, or Becker. excuse me. Lane 3, Callie Sutton. Lane 4, Addison Wood. Lane 5, Sophie James. And Lane 6, 
Lauren and Neeson. Should be a close race. Several girls in the 27s, a couple in the 28s, and one in the 29. As these 50 freeze, they go quick. And, you, and you, the first couple races, we talked about the big time drops. You know, you saw one second, two seconds, five seconds. In this 50, it's more about getting sometimes those tenths of a second drops. Yeah, and that's typically what we're looking at. I mean, there's a, a lot of times there's really nothing pretty about watching a 50 free because this is a power race. Um, good technique, uh, good intensity. A lot of times a, a big difference in a meet like this. Coming out of the turn, it looked like in lane four, Addison Wood was in the lead. And she is trying to hold off. And she has a couple of contenders coming up right behind her, but it looks like Allison Wood is going to touch first and come away with the win there in heat, um, heat number six. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Heat seven is about to be on the blocks. Lane assignments. Lane one, Olivia Fenburn. Lane two, Arlie Amspoker. Lane three, Addison Newman. Lane four, Katie Bauer. Lane five, Brooklyn Bourne. And lane six, Kayla Frost. Addison Newman in lane three has the top qualifying time in 24.51 seconds. And she's looking to come out here and take home the WBL championships in the 50. A couple of good starts down in lane one. Olivia Fenber got out to a great start. But coming out of the turn, she found herself down in lane three, lane four. They're fighting for it. Addison Newman looks like she's going to hold everybody off, and she does in a time of 24-82 as Addison Newman is your WBL champion. So that does it for the girls' sprinters. Up next, it'll be the boys in the pool when we return on WOSN. Welcome back to the 2022-2023 WBL Swimming Championships at Napoleon High School. As the boys' 50-yard freestyle race is underway, Heat 5 is about to step up onto the blocks. Lane assignments in lane one, Hunter Drury. Lane two, Jack Cost. Lane three, Grady Steffen. Lane four, Carter Hale. Lane five, Alex Schroeder. And lane six, Rex Paquin. Middle of the pool in lanes three and four. Looks to be a tight race, at least on paper, as Grady Steffen and Carter Hale only separated by less than two-tenths of a second. Absolute phenomenal start by Grady Steffen right there. Uh, really good underwater, came up, was at speed right away with his first stroke. Coming out of the wall first, Grady Steffen trying to see if he can't swim a time that will get him on the podium. Right now just on the outside looking in, looking for a strong finish. And Steffen is going to finish, and he swims a great time of 23.5 seconds. And that might be good enough to get him onto the podium depending on how heat six goes. Lane assignments for Heat 6. Lane 1, Landon Staller. Lane 2, Owen Becker. Lane 3, Luke Weirwill. Lane 4, Marcus McLean. Lane 5, Gannon Casebolt. And in lane 6, Brock Whaley. Top time coming in to uh, this, uh, into this race, excuse me, belongs to lane 3. Look, we're Luke Weirwill with a time of 22.42. Heat record belongs to Alex Huntingford. He swam a 21-6-6 just last year, it looks like, at this race. As Luke is trying to see if he can't hold off the challengers, it looks like he is going to get to the wall first in a time of 22-5-8, and he will be your 2022-23 WBL champion in the 50-yard freestyle. He had great acceleration going on that turn. Really propelled himself off well to really uh, finish that last 25 out incredibly strong. So the sprinters will be out of the water. And when we return, we will have the girls 100-yard butterf butterfly race for you. Stay tuned. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Napoleon High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham as the girls 100-yard butterfly is taking center stage as Heat 2 of 3 is just finishing up and Heat 3 will be getting ready to take the blocks. Lane assignments for Heat 3 from Kenton, Riley Hunt in lane 1. In lane 2 from St. Mary's, Peyton Gable. In lane 3 from Walpaw, Katie Bauer. In lane 4 from Ottawa Glandorf, Taylor Knott. In lane 5 also from Ottawa Glandorf, Morgan Mag. And in lane 6, Walpaw Canetta. Or from, excuse me, from Walpaw, Canada, it's Kaya Sutton. 
Swimmers step up as they wait for their signal to get going. We have a clean start, and all the swimmers are in the water. You know, Cody, 100 butterfly is a difficult swim. The butterfly is a very taxing stroke as it is. And then when you start adding a little bit of distance onto it, it, it can really take its toll on these swimmers. Absolutely. It's uh, probably, uh, from just a stroke standpoint, one of the most physically demanding. Um, as we kind of go through, when you get to see really strong technique, really good uh, fast underwater poles, really strong kick. And typically, that's a big difference uh, in a meet like this. The other thing we'll see um, is these open turns, we kind of get underwater. That underwater has got to have a good, strong, big, powerful dolphin kick just to kind of get through, just to kind of reduce the amount of swimming you have to do to kind of keep your energy stores up. So after the first 50, Katie Bauer had a huge lead. As she gets the last open turn, she still has that lead. And she currently is leading Taylor Knott. And they came in pretty close as far as time goes. But Katie Bauer is going to leave no doubt as she looks to swim away from Taylor. Taylor did make up a little bit of time on that last 25, but with a 101-3-2, takes two seconds off, and she is going to be your WBL champion. And see on the replay, Taylor not trying to track her down. Taylor also was able to drop some time, so a fast heat for these girls. But in the end, Katie Bauer comes away, and she's going to walk away as conference champ. We will step aside, and when we return, it's the boys' turn as they will be in the water for the 100-yard butterfly. We'll be back on WOSN. As we are on to the boys' 100-yard butterfly race, Heat 2 of 3 is in the pool right now, finishing up. Heat 3 is on deck. Lane assignments for Heat 3. In lane 1, Landon Stoller of Bath. In lane 2, Jaden Welker of Van Wert. Lane 3, Griffin Lukey from St. Mary's. In lane 4, Luke Weirwell from Walpock in lane five, Logan Hartman of Defiance, and in lane six, Thomas Coe from, uh, from Shawnee, excuse me. Top qualifying time coming in to heat three belongs to lane three's Griffin Lukey from St. Mary's with a time of 53.72. As the swimmers step up to the blocks, get set, we have a clean start. First break out of the water. Great start by, it looked like Jaden Welker. We saw him have a great race earlier that he ended up losing in the final moment. Got to think that's on his mind, wanting to come away with the victory here. Uh, he's definitely going to be pushing hard. He's against really some incredibly talented swimmers. But I tell you right, right, right now, his training, uh, his confidence, he's really confident, and it is absolutely showing in the water. So Jaden Welker is extending that lead. Coming in, he had the third fastest qualifying time, but right now he is doing everything he can to hold on to this lead. In lane four, Luke Weirwell, is he is the one who just out-touched uh, Jaden in their previous race, but Jaden Welker this time is not gonna leave anything to chance, finishing strong as he has a drop in time, and Jaden Welker is your 2022-23 WBL champion in the boys' 100-yard butterfly. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you what, that last 50 was incredibly strong, and you can really see how well he's trained, how well he's conditioned heading into this wall. His stroke count was absolutely perfect. So there is going to be a break on deck as they are going to announce awards. We will step aside as well, and when we return, we will have the girls' 100-yard freestyle on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsors Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The girls' 100-yard freestyle race is underway as Heat 5 of 7 is finishing up in the pool. Heat 6 is on deck. Lane assignments for Heat 6 are as follows. In lane 1, Kenley Howe of Kenton. Lane 2, Adrian Fry of Defiance. Lane 3, Kayla Frost of Shawnee. Lane 4, Lucia rodriguez Freira of Wapak. In lane 5, from Shawnee. It's Aria Mio, and in lane six from Walpock, Addison Krause. Top qualifying time for heat six belongs to Kayla Frost in lane three with a 102.40. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham. And Cody, you know, we talked about the sprints of the 50s. We kind of talked about that middle 200 distance. You know, this 100, it's an all-out sprint, and these girls have got to find, they got to get, get a little bit deeper to pull this one out. Absolutely, this is kind of gut check time. So 
uh, how, we, how I've always kind of approached my swimmers before is this is 250s, it's not a 100. So treat them both as 50 sprints. Uh, get in and out of your flip turns as quick as you can, and that's just strong and powerful in between the flags. Kayla Frost is doing just that as she is out to a big lead, almost a full body length lead over second place. Coming into her final flip turn as she wants to head down and finish up her last 25. So Kayla Frost in first. Second place looks like it belongs to lane six, Addison Krause. And closely behind her in lane five, or excuse me, in lane two is Adrian Fry of Defiance. So Kayla Frost comes away with the victory in heat five, or I'm sorry, heat six, as heat seven now is on deck. Lane assignments for heat seven. In lane one, Addison Wood. Lane two, Delaney Buxton. Lane three, Brooklyn Bourne. Lane four, Avery Bowers. Lane five, Haley Becker. And in lane six, Ansley Newman. So that one minute flat may be good enough for Kayla Frost to get herself onto the podium when you look at the qualifying times here in the final heat of the girls' 100 meter freestyle. We'll see if these girls are able to take it home or if Kayla Frost ends up with some big points for her team. Really good start here in these uh, middle lanes from these girls here in this last heat of the 100 free as they get into that first flip turn. Coming out of the first flip turn, it looks like it is Brooklyn Bourne. She also has the top qualifying time here in Heat 7 with a 58-35, and she is out to the early lead. She finishes her first 50 in 27 seconds flat. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal 50 for her as we kind of set this out. She's got a couple other experienced swimmers around here, and we'll see if they're able to close this gap heading into this last turn. Pretty close race for second and third, 27-7-9 and 27-8-4 right behind her. But right now, Brooklyn Bourne doing enough. But you can see, trying to close the gap. Out of Elida, Avery Bowers is trying to get close. Can Brooklyn hold her off? Here comes Avery, Brooklyn down to the end. And it looks like it is going to be Brooklyn Bourne out touching Avery Bowers right at the end. Absolute phenomenal finish between these three right through here. You get to see a little bit of the technique where this swimmer here in the middle just absolutely digs into that wall and punches that wall to finish. So that will wrap up the 100-yard freestyle for the girls. Boys are up next. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. The boys' 100-yard freestyle is in the water as Heat 4 of 6 finishes up. Heat 5 is getting ready to get started. Lane assignments for Heat 5. In lane one, Julian Jordan of Walpark. Lane two, Alex Schroeder of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Lucas Bell of Bath. Lane four, Wyatt Kendall of Kenton. Lane five, Tommy Mustaine of, of Kenton. And in lane six, Wyatt Mallet from Shawnee. Top time in this race belongs to Lucas Bell in lane three as he comes in with a qualifying time of 55.20. Clean start, no disqualifications, as all races today have gone off uh, rather smoothly. And we are through the first 25. We'll see who comes out of the wall on top. And it looks like that is going to belong to lane one, Julian Jordan of Walpark swimming a nice first 50. Absolutely, definitely out swimming those uh, faster seats here in the middle. We'll see how this middle, uh, this last 50 ends up kind of shaking out, how they can bring it home. Julian Jordan from Walpock out in lane one having one heck of a 100-meter race. He is out to a nice lead. and looks like he's only adding to it as he goes into his last 25. Julian Jordan trying to hold off charges coming from lane two and Alex Schroeder. And Julian Jordan, that lead shrinking just a bit, but it looks like Julian is going to hold on and he is going to take the win in 53-9 for a huge drop in time for Julian Jordan. Uh, that is significant at any point in the season for a 100 free swimmer, especially here in a championship meet like that. Definitely kind of uh, out punch that weight class. And we have one more heat left, so he can really put some pressure on those kids in that final heat. And heat six is on the blocks. Lane assignments, lane one, Carter Cleves. Lane two, Sam Hogue. Lane three, Jackson Newcomb. Lane four, Gannon Casebolt. Lane five, Colin Steffen. And lane six, Carter Hale. No surprise here in this 100 as we've said a lot of names that we've already heard specifically in that 50-yard uh, freestyle earlier. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be an incredibly fast heat. Uh, this freshman here in the middle of Jackson Newcomb from Salina is, uh, is a YMCA Nationals qualifier. Uh, as a freshman, he's uh, incredibly tall, really lean, really strong swimmer, but he's also going against a lot of very experienced and skilled swimmers in this heat. 
and uh, we'll get a chance to see how this is uh, going to kind of finish out here. After the first 50, Newcomb with the 5 one hundredths of a second lead, but it looks like Sam Hogue is pushing him, and coming out of that last turn, Hogue with the lead, Newcomb trying to stay with him. This is going to come down to the end. Jackson and Newcomb going into the wall. We'll see who can punch the wall first. And it looks like it is going to be a lane two. Sam Hogue with the upset. And he is going to be your WBL champion. Absolute phenomenal race. He really dug deep coming out of that last turn and absolutely powered his way into this wall. As you saw, a nice time drop from Sam Hogue as he won that race in 49-4-1. A great win for him. Uh, Sam Hogue is the WBL champion in the 100-yard freestyle. We will step aside, and it's going to be the distance swimmer's time when we return, as we will have the girls 500-yard freestyle when we return on WOSN. Welcome back. The distance swimmers are taking center stage as the girls 500-yard freestyle is up on the blocks. Heat three of three. Lane assignments are as follows in lane one, Abby Kloss, uh, Kloss excuse me, from Ottawa Glendorf. Lane two, Willow Horman from Ottawa Glendorf. Lane three, Haley Childs of Van Wert. In lane four, Elizabeth Seidner from Walpock. In lane five, Vivian Elrod of Elida. And in lane six, Kaya Howe from Kenton. Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham and Cody. You know, we talked a lot about the different kind of strategies that go into sprints. We talked about individual medleys, the kind of the mid distance, that 100, which is kind of just an all out sprint, even though it's a, it's a little bit of a distance. But when you talk about the 500 and the strategy and what goes into not just racing, it's the preparation for the racing, it is a completely different animal. Yeah, there is nothing like this uh, really in high school swimming events. Uh, probably the biggest challenge for most of these swimmers is to really not allow that adrenaline of that first 100 to control them as they get out. So you, you kind of definitely want to capture that energy, um, just the excitement of the race, but don't allow that adrenaline to really push you too hard and borrow from everything you're going to need in the middle of this race. Um, some of the things that we're really kind of looking for with these swimmers is can how quickly can they get to kind of their rhythm and their pace uh, when they're swimming other swimmers around them who are maybe a little bit faster or pushing really hard. Are they able to control the race that they want to swim? Um, so those are really important aspects of this uh, this 500-yard swim. And you see Haley Childs out to the early lead after the first 100. And she's working on uh, her 200-yard now. We'll take a look at some of the results from earlier races that we haven't had time to catch everybody up on. The boys' 200-yard freestyle. Um, that was won by Alex Huntingford of Walpock. He set a new meet record with 145.54. In second, Sam Hogue. In third, Colin Steffen. In fourth was Mason Latham. In fifth was Daniel Cope. And in sixth was Tyson Rosengarten. Taking a look at the girls' 200-yard IM results. In first place, Marissa Beckett. Second place, Sierra Rupert. Third place, Elizabeth Seidner. In fourth place, Morgan Mag. In fifth place, Callie Sutton. And in sixth place was Ariam Iab. For the boys, 200-yard IM. Taking home the victory was Reese Triplett of St. Mary's. In second place, Jaden Welker. Third place, Brady Triplett. In fourth place, Thomas Cole. In fifth place, it was Ross Huntingford. And in sixth, it was Logan Hartman. When we look at the sprints, taking a look at the girls' 50-yard freestyle results. In first place, Addison Newman took home the conference championship. In second place, Katie Bauer. In third, Arlie Amspoker. In fourth, it was Brooklyn Bourne. In fifth, Olivia Fenbert. And in sixth, Kayla Frost. So we are about 200 yards into this 500. And we're going to step aside, and when we return, we will have the finish of the girls' 500-yard freestyle here on WOSA. Welcome back. Haley Childs has opened up a big lead as she begins her last 50 yards in the 500-yard freestyle as she is coming in on a nice time, looking to drop a little bit of time as you know, all these swimmers have obviously the, the conference championships and, and finishing well here um, on their minds but also want to make sure that they're getting themselves ready for that sectional run in two weeks. Haley Childs wrapping up her swim here. She is going to take home 
the WBL Championship. Right now, it's just a matter of where she's going to finish. 540, 541, 42. She touches the wall in 543, 18. Dropped three seconds off of her qualifying time. A great swim by Haley Childs. And Elizabeth Seidner has continued another great WBL Championship meet. Uh, has taken an absolute thir about 13 seconds off of her 500 time finishing second right there. That, that is no easy feat as we have some other fit, uh, swimmers wrapping up in third place down in lane one, Abby Klaus. And in fifth place, it'll be Willow Horman. Or sorry, that's fourth place. In fifth place, it'll actually be Vivian Elrod. She's finishing. And then Kaya Howe will take home sixth. We will step aside one more time. When we return, we'll have some more results. We'll take a look at the updated team scores for the WEL Championship, and we'll have the boys' distance swimmers in the pool. Stay tuned. You're watching High School Swimming on WOSN. Welcome back. It's the boys' distance swimmers now as they are on the block getting ready for the boys' 500-yard freestyle. Lane assignments for heat three of three. Starts with lane one, Aiden Latham of Shawnee. Lane two, Daniel Coe of Shawnee. Lane three, Alex Huntingford, who owns the meet, uh, meet record that he set last year from Walpaw. In lane four, Jack Coast of Defiance. In lane five is Tyson Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. And in lane six, Jace Utrip of Ottawa Glandorf. So I think really the big thing to watch here, Cody, is going to be Alex Huntingford, whether or not he's going to go for that record. Uh, his seat time just one second off, uh, seated at a 4.52. Meet record is a 4.51. Not really anticipating anybody being up there to kind of push him through that. It's just going to be a mental game for him. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, this is something that Alex is going to be familiar with anyway. So he's out here. He's cruising. He is running his own race. Um, he's obviously an incredibly talented and skilled swimmer, but the other thing is, is his experience um, is really one of the things that sets himself apart. So he's already in good rhythm. He's getting in and out of his turns with really kind of really good velocity. So when he comes up out of those flags, he's just swimming his race. He doesn't have to accelerate. What's really interesting is this kind of second race we have going on over here between lanes one, two, uh, four, and five to see where they kind of go. So I think we'll see some significant time drops through them because this is really a race. They have somebody pushing them, somebody pulling them. Um, it's just going to be kind of an interesting finish as we get through it. So let's take a look at some more results from earlier races, starting with the boys 50-yard freestyle. Your conference champion is Luke, is Luke Wywill as he came in first. Second was Marcus McLean. Third, Owen Becker. Fourth, Landon Staller. In fifth place, it was Grady Steffen. And in sixth was Gannon Casebolt. For the girls, 100-yard butterfly results. Katie Bauer is the conference champ. In second, Taylor Knott. Third is Peyton Gable. In fourth place, Morgan Mag of Ottawa Glendorf. In fifth place, Riley Hunt of Kenton. And in sixth place is Kaya Sutton. Going to the boys' side for the 100-yard butterfly. The WBL champ is Jaden Welker swam a great race to hold off uh, runner-up Luke Wywell to take home that victory. In third place was Griffin Lukey. In fourth place is Thomas Coe. In fifth place was Landon Stoller. And in sixth place, Aiden Schneider. Back to the freestyle stroke as we take a look at the girls' 100-yard freestyle results. Taking home first was Brooklyn Bourne. Second, Delaney Buxton. Third was Avery Bowers. Fourth, Haley Becker. Fifth place went to Kayla Frost. And sixth place was Addison Wood. On the boys' side for the 100-yard freestyle, taking home the championship was Sam Hogue of Van Wert. Second was Jackson Newcomb. Third, Gannon Casebolt. Fourth, Colin Steffen. Fifth place was Carter Cleaves. And in sixth was Julian Jordan. Taking a look at the updated team standings, uh, Cody, I know you have those in front of you as the, all these teams are looking at the individual stuff, but they love taking home that team trophy as well. Absolutely. So uh, following the girls here through event 16, uh, Bath is in 10th, Van Wert is in 9th, Defiance is in 8th, Salina is 7th, Elida 6th, St. Mary's 5, Kenton 4, uh, top three will also get point scores. Lima, uh, Shawnee, 125 points in third. Uh, the Wapakoneta Redskins, 138 in second. And Ottawa Glandorf Titans uh, has the lead right now with a total point score of 177. That's through event 16. On the boys' side, we're looking at Elida in 10th. Kenton uh, and Defiance are tied here with 8. Uh, Salina, 7. 
Uh, Bath is six. Uh, Ottawa Glandorf is fifth. Van Wert is fourth. And once again, top scores. Uh, Shawnee is third with 100 points. St. Mary's is second with 111. And Wapak is first with 150 total points up through uh, event 14. So still very close as those top three teams on both sides are looking to take home the conference championship. As usually, uh, Shawnee has been pretty dominant on the girls' side. They have 13 total team titles. On the boys' side, 12. And so right now, though, Shawnee looking up, trying to see if they can't add to that total. And a few other teams trying to creep in, and they like taking home the hardware as well. So you hear the bell ringing. That means Alex Huntingford is on his last 50 yards to go as he is swimming a great pace on this last 50, Cody. You know, everything starts to burn, even for the best condition, you know, especially when you're not 100% sure who's around you, who you need to pass. All your focus is on finishing this last 25 part. Yeah, absolutely. This is where uh, technique makes tired easy. I want to tell you what, Alex has good technique. He's always consistent, pretty smooth, and he is finishing with absolute authority right now. So Alex Huntingford not able to break his own meet record as he finished in a time of 457.73 but still a very impressive time, and either way, he will be your 2023 conference champion. Now we have a couple of more racing as we have some guys still fighting for some extra points, wanting to get their team in better position for the second spot. As right now, it looks like it's going to be lane number five, and that is Tyson Rosengarten as he is finishing, excuse me, that's actually lane four. That's um, Jack Cost of Defiance. He comes in third as everybody else comes in, and we will have the official results a little bit later for everybody. But a great race by Alex Huntingford and a very close race for the rest of the competitors as well. So that is going to wrap up the boys' 500-yard freestyle. When we return, it is back to relay time as we'll have the girls' 200-yard freestyle relay. Keep watching. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the WBL Swimming Championships here at Napoleon High School. Girls 200 yard freestyle relay is up. And heat two of two lane assignments. In lane one, Elida. Lane two, Ottawa Glandor. Lane three, Wapakoneta. Lane four, Shawnee. Lane five, St. Mary's. And in lane six, Kenton. Should be a fast paced race as this is one of my favorites throughout the entire meet because, you know, Cody, start to finish. It is just all you can, all out, everybody just going as fast as they absolutely can. Yeah, this is going to be uh, kind of gut check time for a couple of our swimmers who just got out of the pool from the 500 here just a few minutes ago. Um, but when we're really looking at conference championships, we're looking through this. This is a big team title as we kind of come through. There's a lot of points on the line. So when you're talking to your swimmers, some of the things we're looking at is be aggressive when you're up on that block, but don't be reckless trying to get in too soon and catch yourself with the disqualification. So Olivia Fenbert from Ottawa Glandor gave her team the early lead as she swam the first leg. Morgan Mag in the water now trying to hold on to that lead as she heads into the wall. Top time coming into this race was held by Walpaw Canet at a 144.45, and they are closing the gap as Morgan Mag is trying to hold off this surge from Walpaw as she goes into the wall. Ottawa Glandor still in first place. These top three are really close, and you're going to see here on the back end, you're going to see some incredibly strong swimmers, but also they're highly motivated, and they got people to chase, and they're going to chase. Morgan Schimler swimming a fantastic 50, as she has opened the lead now on Walpock as they are almost out to a full length, uh, body length lead here coming into the last leg. It is going to be up to Addison Newman to hold this lead for her team. And there is a close fight for second between Walpock and Shawnee as Katie Bauer and Addison Newman are going to fight this one out. Excuse me, I meant Ottawa Glendorf. Marissa Beckett is, actually, is the fourth leg for Ottawa Glendorf as she is going to come up with a huge lead. And going into the wall, Ottawa Glendorf is going to come away with a victory. And it looks like Addison Newman for Shawnee is going to give her team second. That was a phenomenal race. And honestly, just a little bit back and forth, all the way from that very first swimmer all the way to the very last. As you see, Marissa Beckett going into the wall. A three-second drop in time, a pump of the left arm. Excited for that, uh, that time as 
Donwick Landorf swam a fantastic race. We are going to step aside. When we come back, it's going to be the boys' turn as they will be in the water for the 200-yard freestyle relay. Don't go anywhere. You're watching High School Swimming on WOSN. Welcome back. The boys' 200-yard freestyle relay is, is on deck as the second heat of two is about to take the blocks. Lane assignments for heat two. Ottawa Glendorf, lane one. Shawnee, lane two. Walpacaneta, lane three. St. Mary's, lane four. Salina, lane five. And Kenton in lane six. Cody, you talked about having a quick turnaround for some of these swimmers from the 500 into this sprint 200-yard freestyle relay. And, you know, the one that jumps off the page the most is Alex Huntingford. Absolutely. And um, luckily that we're in a position that we're at a pool. They get a chance to kind of warm down. He gets to clear and get his head reset. Um, he's going to pull up this anchor, but I'm going to tell you what, with his experience and skill set, you won't see it affect him very much. So we had the starter get him down for a start, but then call him up. One of the swimmers went off, but not a disqualification. Gets a chance to reset, and now we are off. St. Mary's out to the early lead as Reese Triplett had a great start. He's going to go into the wall first after the first 25. Comes up, extends that lead to about three-quarters body length. Trying to see if he can't get out. The top time coming in to this, into this meet was held by Walpock with a 133-59. And the other teams have to know that they want to get a big lead because they know what's waiting for them on that fourth leg. Yeah, absolutely. This is where in that relay uh, with these St. Mary's boys, I tell you right, right now, that person on the block is going to be primed to be off that block as quick as possible. Second leg almost over. St. Mary's still in the lead. Walpock right on their heels, though. St. Mary's comes out of the water first. And that lead is almost all but shrunk as they are almost dead, even heading into the wall. Flip turn, same time. And good kick underwater, break the water at the same time. And this is going to come down to the fourth leg for both teams. It's going to be a race between Alex Huntingford and Marcus McLean. They hit the water at the same time. McLean coming up, has the early edge, but here comes Huntingford. You see if Huntingford is having any ill effects from that 500. It doesn't look like it. As Huntingford hits the wall first, they come up. They are dead even. Even the crowd can sense it as everybody rises. Huntingford with that long frame looks like he's going to take the lead, and he will finish first in a time of 132.65. Walpock will take home the WBL championships tell you what there's been a lot of energy in this building most of the time today and boy was that shared between everybody right at that very end a close race throughout st mary's held the lead for the majority of it but when it mattered alex huntingford stepped up big and he did just enough to edge out marcus mclean as walpock is the 2023 wbl champs in the boys 200 yard freestyle relay we will step aside one more time and when we return it'll be the girls backstroke we'll be back on wosn Welcome back. Girls 100-yard backstroke is up as Heat 3 of 5 is finishing up. Heat 4 is on deck. Lane assignments for Heat 4 in lane 1, Amelia Hastings. In lane 2, Lucia Rodriguez-Ferreira. In lane 3, Abby Klaus. In lane 4, Kinley Howe. In lane 5, Addison Kraus. And in lane 6, Elena McCrate from Ottawa Glandor. Top time coming into this race belongs to Abby Kloss of Ottawa Glendorf with 111.37. As everybody in this heat is going to be looking to drop some time so they can try to make the podium. They are underway. Nate Garlock alongside Cody Graham. And, you know, Cody, the 100 is it's a unique event. We've talked about a lot of these different strokes and kind of, you know, the techniques that it goes into and, and the different type of... Uh, you know, just the different type of, of skill that it takes to, to be able to do those. You know, I think a lot of people look at the backstroke and think, oh, well, you get to breathe the whole time. <laughs> you know, that, that's the one that we're used to doing, you know, when we're kids in the pool, hanging out just kind of as a leisure stroke. This one's relatively easy to do, but eh, it couldn't be farther from the truth. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's one of those things like your, your reward is the fact you get to breathe every stroke, but uh, everything else is kind of a penalty after that. It's, you know, pretty high intense. Uh, really, your quads uh, from your kick are going to be burning pretty good when you're done. And then the challenge is getting that flip turn right, uh, making sure your count's right, making sure it didn't change in case you had a short stroke something or maybe you're swimming a little bit faster or reaching a little bit harder. So in a championship meet, an event like this, you have to make sure everything is on point. 
And, and I really think that that mental part is what I think a lot of people don't, don't think about. You know, if you get lost or kind of lose track, you have to be locked in the entire time during the 100 because if not and you lose track of where you're at and you mess up that flip turn, it can be pretty rough. Yeah, and starting just, from a dead stop is not the easiest thing to do at a pool. So Abby Klaus drops three seconds off of her time to take home the win in Heat 4 as Heat 5 gets ready. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Heat 5 of 5, lane assignments, lane 1, Peyton Gable, lane 2, Sierra Rupert, lane 3, Taylor Knott, lane 4, Morgan Schimler, lane 5, Arlie Amspoker, and in lane 6, Sophie James. And this is going to be an excellent race against several different swimmers that I think we could see down at state. Yeah, absolutely. So not not only is this just going to be a fast heat for this meet, but you're looking at somewhere between two to four of these girls could potentially be uh, representing their schools at the state meet here at the end of February. You know, and that's some of the things that I think people don't understand about swimming. You know, we're used to basketball or, you know, um, whether it's basketball, football, you know, and pretty much every other sport that has, you know, at, at a minimum three different divisions. Swimming, there's only two, so it becomes that much more difficult to get down there. Every school in Ohio is broken down to either Division One or Division Two. Absolutely. Looking here at this race right now, I'll tell you what, Arlie Ansboker has uh, absolutely had a, a phenomenal first 50. Uh, her and Morgan over here in lane five actually have been best friends since they were seven years old, and they are constantly racing each other, and they're really up against Taylor Knott, who I think is going to have a strong last 25. So this race is coming down to it, as we may see some extremely good times coming down into this race as this one I can't it's almost too close to call from up here we're gonna have to wait to see who touches the wall first and it looks like the win is gonna go to I believe that's lane number five it is Arlie Amspoker drops 2.37 seconds to swim to win the 100 back in a minute point nine seven so congratulations to Arlie a tremendous swim out of her as she is going to take home the WBL championship. So we will step aside, and when we return, the boys will be in the water for the backstroke. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Nick Garlock alongside Cody Graham. The boys' 100-yard backstroke is underway as Heat 1 of 3 is just finishing up. Heat 2 of 3 is about to get into the water. Lane assignments for Heat 2. Lane 1, Mason Voigt. Lane 2, Dylan Geiswin. Lane 3, Connor Vondra. Lane four, Tommy Mustaine, and lane five is Alex McGuire. So lane is, and the uh, race is just finishing up as lane six was having a little bit of struggle there getting to the end. I think kind of lost track of where they were in the pool that time. So down in the water as they get ready for the start. Swimmers are set, and they are off. A clean start for all, as we should have a good race here in Heat 2 as well, as all of these swimmers are only separated by two seconds or less. You're going to see a good, pretty good start here from the middle. Uh, we're going to see really how they get in and out of that first flip turn. Um, it's going to be pretty fast here as we kind of go through, but all three of these are close enough that they are going to be pushing each other to really drop some significant time. See Alex McGuire off to a good start. And also Connor Vondrell, his teammate in lane three. As they all pretty much break the water right around the same time. The top three almost neck and neck. Lane one, Mason Voigt. Lane three, Connor Vondrell. And lane five, Alex McGuire. So it is going to come down to the last 25 as they hit their flip turns for the final time. Tell you what, nobody's out of this race yet, so we're going to see how this last 25 goes. McGuire looks to have a slight lead, but Voigt yeah, down in lane one. Looks like he's turning it on, trying to take it home, and he will get to the wall just in time. And it looks like second is going to go to McGuire. So a very close race here in heat two as they were neck and neck going into the wall. Take a look at our replay here. And actually, it looks like it might have been McGuire who hit that wall first and Voigt who came in second. So very tight. So Heat 3 now in the water. Heat 3 will line up as uh, like this. Lane 1 is Isaiah Wackoff. Lane 2 is Mason Latham. Lane 3, Owen Becker. 
Lane four is Reese Triplett. Lane, lane five is Brock Wally. And in lane six is Jace Utrecht. This, we talked about how close that last race was. This one might not be as close between all of them, but the two fastest times only separated by half a second. Yeah, it's pretty impressive you get a chance to go through, and it's always nice as a swimmer having somebody right around you who you know that you can kind of depend upon uh, to kind of push you along. It looks like Reese Triplett in lane four out to the early lead into his turn first. He breaks water slightly ahead of Mason Latham. As Owen Becker, excuse me, is right on his heels as they go into the last 25. So Owen Becker and Reese Triplett, they're going to race for first as it looks like Reese Triplett currently has the lead, but here comes Owen Becker, and Becker with the last wow. surge in the last 10 yards is going to take it home in a time of 54-87 as Reese Triplett touches the wall in 55-39. Man, they are neck and neck coming into this flags right here. And I tell you what, Owen Becker found something he didn't quite have before and just absolutely finished with authority right here. So a new season best for Owen Becker wins him the conference title as he will go away the boys' 100-yard backstroke champion. So we're going to step aside one more time. When we return, the girls' 100-yard breaststroke will be in the water. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. The girls' 100-yard breaststroke is up. Heat five of five. Lane assignments. Lane one, Olivia Fenberg. Lane two, Ansley Newman. Lane three, Marissa Beckett. Lane four, Addison Newman. Lane five, uh, Sydney. You know, Koslikavich. There we go. You're We've been welcome. working on that name all day, and I, I knew you'd come in for me when you needed. Uh, she's in lane five, and in lane six is Jordan Bush of Defiance. So the best stroke, another highly skilled stroke, very difficult to master. So these girls that are able to do it well and fast are very impressive. You know, full disclosure, back in high school, I, I did the breaststroke a couple of times and somehow managed just to sink to the bottom, never actually <laughs> moved forward. <laughs> Makes it much more impressive when you see somebody who's been able to develop that skill and has that talent. Yeah, absolutely. Take a look at some results. In the boys, 500-yard freestyle. First place goes to Alex Huntingford. Second is Jack Cost. In lane, or third place is Tyson Rosengarten. Fourth place goes to Daniel Coe. Fifth place, Aiden Latham. And sixth place goes to Dylan Geisman. As our breaststrokers are coming up on their last open turn, final 25 of the race. As currently out in the lead. Looks. what Addison Newman is absolutely putting the pressure on right here. So this is going to be a phenomenal finish as we go through. Addison Newman with the lead right behind her. Marissa Beckett, they get to the wall. And Newman is going to out-touch Beckett. And she will take home the victory in the time of 108.59. Just a great finish by both ladies. As you saw Addison Newman drop some time to be able to take home that win. Tell you what, it's the importance of conference meets. Gives you a chance to kind of dig deep and find something you haven't found yet. We are going to step aside, and when we return, it'll be the boys' 100-yard breaststroke on deck. We'll be back on WOSN. <laughs> Welcome back to Napoleon High School. The boys' 100-yard breaststroke in the water as Heat 4 of 4 is getting ready to get started. Lane assignments for Heat 4. In lane 1, Grady Steffen. In lane 2, Ross Huntingford. In lane 3, Jackson Newcomb. In lane 4, Griffin, Griffin Lukey. In lane five, Marcus McLean, and in lane six, Connor Latham. We are on record watch as both Jackson Newcomb and Griffin Lukey are both right there and have the ability, if they drop a little bit of time, to take home this record. It's going to be an exciting race, and I hope that's how it turns out for both of them. Jackson Newcomb with the... Uh, best qualifying time at 1 minute, 0.36. Griffin Lukey next with 1 minute, 7.5. Meet record is a minute, 0 0.01. And so they'll have to swim a one flat or under to set a new record. Newcomb out to the early lead as he heads into the end of his first 50. With Newcomb right there, but also swimming a great race. Ross Huntingford of Walpock, you had to know he'd be right in the mix as well. 
Absolutely, Grady Stephan up here in lane one had a, a really strong first 50 and is actually right up there uh, pressuring Jackson from over in lane one. And actually, as they come next to us, lane one, Grady Stephan is in first heading into the last wall. They are neck and neck, and such a surprise. We were paying more attention to the middle. Didn't see him come almost out of nowhere as Grady Stephan continues to have a great swim. Looks like he might have the slide edge on Jackson Newcomb. It's going to come down to the end. Newcomb, and it wow. looks like, as I'm trying to wait to see for the official time, as it looks like lane three, Jackson Newcomb is going to get the victory with a 102.02 .02 in lane one. Grady Stephan, who is still pumped up, finishes second with a 102.2, .2, a big two and a half second drop for him. I tell you what, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> that was uh, well earned. So we are almost at the end as we have the big relay to finish things up. The girls' 400-yard freestyle relay will be next. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back to the WBL Swimming Championships here at Napoleon High School. We have reached the final event for the girls and it is the girls 400 yard freestyle relay. Taking a look at the lane assignments. In lane one will be Salina. Lane two, Kenton. Lane three, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Elida. Lane five, Shawnee. And in lane six, Van Wert. Top qualifying time belongs to Ottawa Glandorf in lane three with a time of 402.55. So we should be in store for a good race. Want to catch everybody up on some final results, starting first with the girls' 200 freestyle relay. Finishing first was Ottawa Glandorf, second, Shawnee, third, Walpock, fourth goes to St. Mary's, fifth, Elida, and sixth went to Kenton. For the boys, 200 freestyle relay. Uh, Walpock finished first, St. Mary's finished second, Shawnee was third, Ottawa Glandorf, fourth, Kenton fifth and Salina sixth. Taking a look at the girls backstroke. First place went to Arlie Amspoker. Second place Taylor Knott. Third went to Morgan Schindler. Fourth place Sierra Rupert. Fifth place Sophie James. Sixth place went to Peyton Gable. On the boys side of the backstroke, Owen Becker took home the victory. Second was Reese Triplett. Third Mason Latham. Fourth was Brock Wally. Fifth was Isaiah Wackoff. And sixth was Jace U-Trip. So we are about halfway through our relay here. And a big lead for, looks like, Elida in the lane of four. As they came in with a 4.06 qualifying time, but they are leading the way right now. Absolutely. Avery Bowers had an incredibly fast 59-second uh, leadoff for this 400 free relay. So Ottawa Glandorf back in second with Kenton right on their heels. But right now, it is all Elida having a great relay. Yeah, this is kind of the point of a championship meet when we kind of get through, you get a chance to see some depth. So um, I'm sure Ottawa Glandorf has some of their uh, top swimmers that they've had kind of in some other events, maybe some other relays. Uh, I'm not quite sure how their overall times stack out, but I think you're going to see them come and finish incredibly strong here at the end with these last two swimmers. Allie Sharp has done a nice job of keeping her lead or her team out in front as she comes in to finish her race. In the water for Elida now is Vivian Elrond. Ottawa Glandorf in second as Abby Kloss takes to the water. She's going to try to make up some time as she got off to a nice start off the blocks. Kenton still sitting in third, but St. Mary's is right there trying to track him down. Elida. Still holds the lead after the first 50 with Ottawa Glendorf in second. And as you see, a nice flip turn that time by Elrod. Tell you what, Abbey Class right there has made up a ton of ground and she is digging really hard right now. Klaus still sitting back in second. St. Mary's has taken over third, but Kenton not going away, wanting to stay close. But Vivian Elrod swimming a great race coming up on the final 10 yards of her race. Ottawa Glandorf trying to get it close to give her anchor a chance. 
and it is gonna fall on the shoulders of Arlie Amspoker to keep this lead as she hits the water. We saw her have a great race not too long ago, and she had a, a big win in, I believe it was the backstroke. Yep. Um, but here comes Ottawa Glandor. Tell you what, over the next three, uh, two or three years, we're gonna see Arlie and Willow battle each other quite a bit in quite a few different events. Willow Horman trying to track down Arlie, but right now Arlie looking strong into the wall, starting her last 50. As it looks like she has opened that lead to at least one and a half body length, trying to hold off a surging Willow from Ottawa Glandor. Arlie is an incredibly smooth swimmer. She's very powerful. Um, kind of going through it. I think you're going to see her close this out with a lot of effort. Arlie Amspoker looks like she is going to stay in control, and they are going to go home victorious in the 400-yard freestyle relay with a time of 4.03.05, as they have done a nice job dropping time. Ottawa Glandor coming in second. In third place was Kenton, as it looked like Shawnee was in fourth that time. And Van Wert, I believe, came in fifth. We'll get the final results for you a little bit later. But either way, a great race by Elida. All four swimmers swam strong 100s, and they are going to go away victorious. We have fun one final race for you from here at Napoleon High School. When we return, it'll be the last race of the night, the boys' 400-yard freestyle relay. Don't go anywhere. You're watching High School Swimming on WOSN. Welcome back, the boys. 400-yard freestyle relay is on deck. Our final race of the night at the 2022-2023 Western Buckeye League Swimming Championships. Lane assignments are as follows. In lane two will be Shawnee. Lane three will be Walpaw Canetta. Lane four, Ottawa Glendorf. And in lane five will be Bath. Taking a look to get you all caught up on all results. Starting first with the girls' 100-yard breaststroke. In first was Addison Newman. In second, Marissa Beckett. In third place, Sydney Kozakovic. Kozakow I messed it up again. Kozakovic. Oh, man, that's why we have broadcast partners. You get the best in the business, they help you out with the names. In third, in third, or excuse me, in fourth place, Ansley Newman. In fifth place is Olivia Fenbert. And in sixth place is Jordan Bush. For the boys, 100-yard breaststroke. First place went to Jackson Newcomb. Second, Grady Steffen. In third place, Marcus McLean. Fourth place went to Carter Cleves. Fifth place, Ross Huntingford. And in sixth place, Brady Triplett. And in our last event, the girls 400 freestyle relay. First went to Elida. Second, Ottawa Glandorf. Third to Kenton. Fourth went to Shawnee. Van Wert finished fifth. And Wapakoneta finished sixth. Top time coming into this last event. Wapakoneta was on top with a 3 21 4 8. And, you know, Cody, we're talking off air. You mentioned that this wall park really may look a little different than what we see come tournament time as Ross Huntingford did a few more uh, races tonight than maybe we may see him do during tournament run. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we saw Alex uh, here lead that off with a pretty fast 48.7300 uh, uh, split. Uh, this is this wall park boys team, I'm going to tell you what, is they have <coughs> incredible talent on the top end, but the other thing is is they have great depth as well. And it really shows, along with their training from where they started at the beginning of the year until the way that they're finishing, uh, last year, I mean, they had three relays at state. They had quite a few individual qualifiers, and we're seeing a lot of this in this WBL championship meet today. So Walpock out to the big lead. They are leading Ottawa Glandorf as Aiden Snyder is in the water for Walpock. He's getting ready to finish his 100. Third swimmer is in, and that is Luke Wywill. He's looking strong as Ottawa Glandorf gets their third leg in. Alex Schroeder. As Bath and Shawnee are neck and neck, Daxton Truman takes the water, as does Aiden Latham for Shawnee. Walpock with a very comfortable lead. As we have the results of the team championships that we'll give you um, here shortly. Right now, a lot of these guys are swimming, trying to see if they can't get themselves a good finish individually and as a relay team. Well, and I tell you what, right now, between this Shawnee boys relay and this Bath boys relay, you know, they both train out of the Lima Y. This isn't something that, you know, it's not that they're really going to be unfamiliar with each other. There's a little bit of different pride that gets to go in with this finishing order as well. 
Fourth leg in for Walpock. The anchor is Gannon Casebolt, and he came out flying as they are not cruising to this victory. They are trying to push themselves, obviously running against the clock, wanting to give themselves an opportunity to put a good time up. The meet record for the 400 free is 3.18.30, so they would have to drop some time if they wanted to take that one home. With 3.02 now on the clock, I don't think that they will get there, but still with an opportunity to put up a good time. Absolutely, and the rest of these relays are finishing really strong. Um, unfortunately, this uh, Colin Stefan has his goggles that are around his face. I'm going to tell you what, it takes a skilled and mentally strong swimmer to get through the rest of this. It's incredibly uncomfortable, number one. It shouldn't really interrupt your stroke a uh, whole lot, but it interrupts a little bit, just kind of your vision through all that. It's uncomfortable, and I tell you what, he is bringing it home, and it's incredibly impressive and fun to watch. Walpock does come away with the victory in a time of 3.25.44. Ottawa Glandorf is going to take second. And as it looks like Shawnee will bring home third with Bath coming in fourth here in the final race of the night. Let's take a look at our replay. As you can see, Walpock finishing strong all the way into the wall. Absolutely. I mean, you would have thought that he was racing uh, somebody else right there. I mean, incredibly skilled, really sound in their technique. So that is going to bring this year's WBL Championships to a close. We saw some incredible swims tonight. We saw a lot of uh, kids drop times. We saw PRs. We saw meet records. We got a little bit of everything tonight. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's everything you kind of want. I mean, when you're, when you're really winding down your regular season, you know, this conference championship meet, you know, it's not the end of your season. So it's not that you're training for everybody to have their best times, but there's a little bit of that that, you know, some of these have probably maybe had a little bit of a mini taper coming into this meet. Uh, because the points championship you know, is everything that kind of runs through that. School pride. There's a lot of individuals who are getting ready to set themselves up for a run at the state meet. You know, we have seniors that are likely swimming their last conference meet, things like that. So there's a lot that really goes into this meet, and it's incredibly important for all of them to not only represent them, their school as well, but also to kind of enjoy you know, their high school swimming career and all the work that they put in essentially from October 31st on. I'd like to congratulate tonight's winners. The team championships are going to go to the Ottawa Glandorf girls, their sixth overall championship. And on the boys' side, the Wapakoneta Redskins, they are going to take home their fifth team title. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, Ken Ricker, and our cameraman, Samantha Ryan, doing a great job as always. I'd also like to thank Jerry Booty from the WBL and from Napoleon High School, Andrew Hamm. Thank you guys for allowing us to be here and bring this to all of you at home. We appreciate everything you guys do. One final time from Napoleon High School, the Ottawa Glandorf girls and the Walpaw Canada Redskins take home team championships. They are the 2023 WBL team champs. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Wabash Mutual. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You've been watching High School Swimming on WOSN.